And Notre Dame wins the toss and elects to receive, as is the habit of Coach Weiss on your right. And Joe Tiller will play defense to open the game as Chris Summers is ready to kick it off. And that is a look at Walls, the freshman defensive back, who is deep for the Irish, Darren Walls. Picks it up on the bounce. Makes a cut and has a lane. It closes down at the 30-yard line. He had some daylight for a moment. Fabian Martin closed down to make the special teams tackle for the Boilermakers. So Brady Quinn, remember last year he hit uh, over 64% of his passes. Only 58% this year. 11 touchdowns. And let's look at our starting lineups brought to you by Adidas. Ashton McConnell starts at fullback. A shop Schwab is still injured. The familiar backs and receivers in this offensive line has had its problems at times this season, both in protecting the passer and getting the running game going. Speaking of the running game, here's Darius Walker. I think you're going to be seeing a lot of that today, Tom. Darius Walker on first down. Anthony Spencer, the first to hit Walker. As we look at our Adidas starting lineups for the Boilermaker defense. Keep your eye on Anthony Spencer. He's the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Ten tackles, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery against Minnesota. Kegler, Bick, the leading tackler, and Averill are the linebackers. And in this secondary, two freshmen start, Adams and Irvin. And at times, you might see four freshmen in the backfield for Purdue. Yeah, how would you like to get your first start on the road against Brady Quinn as a freshman defensive back? Second down and short yardage, screen pass, Walker using his blockers, hurdling a would-be tackler to midfield. And a flag down, late hit. Gain of 13, George Hall made the tackle, but the late hit will add it on to the yardage. The referee today, Todd Gerlings, this is a Big Ten crew. You know, Tom, last year... George Hall called for the penalty. You know, this, they'll take another look at this screen, little screen pass to his left. Actually, he's had two of these intercepted this year, little screen passes to the left, but well set up by the Irish. A year ago, they were a very, you saw the late hit, easy call. A very a good screen team this year, not nearly as good on the screen plays. First down, 34-yard line. Irish have sputtered on opening drives most of the season. This is going well so far with Walker playing the starring role. He's touched the ball on every play so far. You're, you're right in opening drives. I mean, you know, look at in 2005, they had eight touchdowns on their opening drive in 12 games. This year, they have not scored a touchdown on their opening drive, and that's distressing to that man, the head coach and the play caller, Charlie Weiss. He loves to take the ball if he wins the toss, score on that opening drive, and put your team in a bind immediately, but they've not been able to do it this year. Second and five for the Irish. Big push in there from Jeff Samarja. Now they take it away. And it's Walker again. Didn't get much that time. Only a couple of yards by the Boilermakers as George Hall, a fifth-year senior from Groton, Connecticut, gets credit for the tackle. Brock Spratt's the defensive coordinator. He thinks, uh, you know, he's got a young team. He likes them. But, boy, there's 117 teams in Division 1A. And in passing, they rank 115th. So he says they're young, they're getting better, but they have their hands filled today with uh, with Brady Quinn and those talented and big wide receivers. Third down for the Irish. They've been anemic in third down conversions all season long. And 27% they've converted. Walker again has the first down and more makes a nice cut back. Wrestled down at about the 13-yard line by Keith Smith. It's a gain of 14 yards. Now, two of the things that Charlie Weiss said to us yesterday, we have got to run the ball better. We've got to pra they practice first and second down much more uh, thoroughly this week, emphasizing the run and short passes and some play action passes. And you know, Tom, we were talking to Ryan Harris, the left tackle for Notre Dame, uh, just yesterday. He was said, as an offensive lineman, you love to start the game like this. It sets 
the real tempo of the game if you can establish the run early. And he said, my goal, our goal, is to get Darius Walker 100 yards. He said it makes a, a physical statement if you can start the run, uh, start the game with the run, pounding the opposing defense. Here's Walker again. He's touched the ball every play of this opening drive. Well, this is an area where the Irish have been awfully good in that red zone this year. You see 13, uh, 13 possessions. How about 10 touchdowns of those 13 possessions? And that's, they have, and, and no turnovers. They really have been, uh, they've struggled in other areas of the field. And, you know, they've gotten behind the, uh, very early in the games in the first quarter. But down here in the red zone, they have been incredibly efficient. And it helps when you have big old Jeff Samarja, I tell you, a, a guy that has always been a factor down here. And Coach Wise says uh, the key is scoring touchdowns. They're not settling for just scoring. Fake to Walker and hand it to Anastasio for the touchdown. Excuse me, for West, George West, who just came in. George West, the freshman from Spencer, Oklahoma, on the end around. And Tom, this time it was an opening drive for the touchdown. Really efficient, a lot of Darius Walker. One screen pass and then the reverse in the uh, for the touchdown. Good block by Ryan Harris on the left side. And George West scores his first touchdown as an Irish player. As they faked it to Walker who had rushed for five mm. rushes and caught a pass. They fake it to him and get the end around for the score. Yeah, Extra point good by Joya. Like a well-planned wedding. Carries in one reception. He had a part in 59 of the 70 yards and then the finish by George West. Here's Burkhardt in to kick, kick off for Notre Dame. And we expect, uh, this is the freshman kicker, we expect him to try to sky it. Ryan Burkhardt to keep it away from the dangerous returners of Purdue, including Dorian Bryant, who had a tremendous game last year against Notre Dame, yeah. both receiving and returning. So Bryant, yards, yeah. Yeah, Bryant and Sheets are deep. Burkhardt, well, he didn't sky it, did he? He kicked it right to Bryant, a line drive. Dorian Bryant spinning to the 30-yard line. Yeah, that guy's instant field position, Dorian Bryant. Lambert makes the tackle, the hero of last week's game, and Curtis Painter will take the field now, the junior from Vincennes, Indiana, hitting 64% of his passes, eight touchdowns, five interceptions. He guided uh, the Boilermakers to three wins to close last season and four to start this one. Corey Sheets leads the nation in scoring 15 points a game. And Bryant, the very dangerous receiver, so is the tight end Dustin Keller. A very experienced and big offensive line, the Great Wall, they call themselves. That's our Adidas Purdue offensive starting lineups. Play action fake and Painter rolls to his right. Delivers. And Dustin Keller stopped after a short game for the Boilermakers. And our Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense. Abby Amiri, Laws, Landry, and Fromm up front. Travis Thomas is out. Replaced by Joe Brockington today. Thomas injured on the last play of the game in East Lansing. And Walls gets the start. Ambrose Wooden still hobbled by injury. Yeah, Darren Walls actually played, started last week against Michigan State, played pretty doggone well as a corner. Purdue spread offense. Painter sends Bryant in motion, hands off to Sheets. Corey Sheets stopped for a no gain or maybe a yard. Brockington and Laws combine on the hits. Tom, you know, it's really early in this ball game, but this is an important down for Purdue. I mean, you generally get in today's game probably 10 to 12 possessions. We've seen the Irish capability of being able to score points early and something late last week. I think you're going to have to match them. I mean, I think they're going to have to be incredibly efficient and I think score at least a field goal on virtually every drive to keep pace. Third and long. Has time downfield and overshoots Selwyn Lyman. Lyman stopped. Yeah, he broke off his router and just slowed to a trot. And looked like if he kept going full speed, he might have been right there. I thought Painter did a good job with the pass. Absolutely. Selwyn Lyman was open. Absolute miscommunication on the route. But he it looks like he certainly, if he didn't stop, he certainly slowed down. 
So the first putt of the game, Jared Armstrong, the Purdue putter, averaging 43.9, a punt. And there's a really good punt returner, Tom Zibikowski. Beautiful punt. High sailing, bounces into the end zone. Well, the net won't be so good for uh, Armstrong, but he had it bounce. It just took a, a Notre Dame bounce. It's a 69-yard punt, which nets 49 on the touchback. Irish getting first quarter, and Charlie Weiss sends his offense back out onto the field. They uh, did establish the run, as he said he wanted to do today. Yeah, yes, a six, run, six runs, one pass in that, in that ratio on that drive. And, you know, the, the last two games, they've gotten way out of whack in the run-to-pass ratio. The score's kind of dictated. Remember, they were yeah, they got behind. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. 44 to 10 in the first quarter. Darius Walker touching the ball all but once on that seven-play drive. You get to touch it a bunch more today, Tom. Just, just a guess. So the Irish off to a good start. Their first opening drive touchdown of the season, and here's Walker again. Twist it down after a gain of two yards. Well, you know, let's go, we'll go back and look at the touchdown again to George West on the reverse. Well, remember, you, Darius Walker carried the ball five times, right? And then right up the middle. So you fake that. You get the linebackers jump on that. Then you hand the ball to George West. Picks up a good block on the outside by Rayma McKnight. And Ryan Harrison gets in the end zone easily. So you fake it to the guy who's carried it successfully five times and give it to George West for the touchdown. Hey, they set that up perfectly. Brady Quinn dodges the rush, dumps it off to Walker, who has just enough for the first down with Dan Bick holding on. Bick, the leading tackler for the Boilermakers. 38 tackles coming in. That was a gain of eight and a first down for the Irish. Bick, the academic All-Big Ten performer from a season ago. Dan Bick, number 36 in the middle of the field, is a pretty good football player. Their leading tackler. You know, although uh, Darius Walker had a nice little gain and Picked up the first down. Dan Bick is a guy that he don't escape his tackles much. Had a tackle for loss, a sack, an interception, and a forced fumble already this year. From Louisville St. Xavier High School. Here's Walker. Drag down for a loss on the play. Big play defensively by Anthony Spencer, the star of that Purdue defense. Loss of three yards. Yeah, big play and Anthony Spencer go hand in hand, don't they? Two years ago in this very stadium against Notre Dame, he was sensational with a couple of sacks. Watch number 49. Brock back the defensive coordinator, said, hey, he may be the best defensive end that's ever come through here. Big old guy at 6'3", 261 pounds, who can really run. But see what he did two years ago here? Two sacks, a deflection, and forced a fumble before he was injured. Walker, again, thrown for a loss by Spencer. I wouldn't go that way. No? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Rethink that one. No. Last week, you know, Minnesota actually slid their protection and their scheme to Anthony Spencer, and he still had nine solo tackles, three tackles for loss, and two sacks. This guy's uh, an old, old broadcaster, you'd say. He's a hoss and a half. He is, and uh, not only is he a hoss, yeah. but he can run like a hoss. Yeah, you see the time, 4-6 for a guy who can bench and squat and power clean, all that stuff. That, that's a 4-6 timed by the NFL. Third down and 16. See if the Irish can convert this third and long. As we said, it's been a problem all season. Quinn identifying the middle linebacker there. Hand it to Walker on the draw play. Darius Walker broke a couple of tackles, but will be stopped short of the first down by Justin Scott. He got 14 yards, but not enough for the first. But that was, what, the 20, I think, fifth time this year now that Charlie Weiss's offense has been in a third and 10-plus. 25th time. And Darius Walker almost gets it on the draw. Boy, he's a you know, clever little runner. Doesn't have a lot of long runs. His longest for him and the team this year is 19 yards, excluding that fake punt a few weeks ago. And so Price, Jeff Price, in punt formation. And Royce Adams will receive it. Coach uh, Weiss saying that Price has been the one consistent player all season long. And he booms this one to Adams. Adams stopped in his tracks. Great downfield coverage by the Irish. He missed it. Five remains first down. Sean Sester with the false start. We were talking uh, to Bill Legg, the, the co-offensive coordinator, about Selwyn Lyman just a couple days ago when we visited West Lafayette, and he said, you know, we're giving him a little bit more each week. A couple weeks ago, he was their featured receiver, and 
Some people say perhaps Joe Tiller's the best recruit the 10 years that he's been there. Yeah, highly sought after recruit who paid his own way to Purdue last season to get freshman eligibility and had a coming out party, as you said, a couple of weeks ago and getting better and better. Corey Sheets with a nice run for the Boilermakers. Got back the penalty and a little more. Corey Sheets is another one of these really talented offensive players that Purdue has. You know, eight rushing touchdowns, and he's a good receiver, too. He's caught two touch running touchdowns, seeing protecting the football, seeing that and Duke way kind of stripped Stanton last week of that uh, mm -hmm. of the ball. I think they're really going to try to protect it as they get hit by this Irish Irish defenders. But he is a good all-around back. Got nine yards on that one. Painter pumps, delivers down the sideline, wide open, and caught by Standiford. <laughs> good design by Bill Leg. And Duque chased him down, but not until he had 23 yards. I'll tell you how he got open. Curtis Painter faked this little bubble screen here, and then watch all the defensive backs jump up, and that allowed Standiford to go right back. They started that bubble screen a few years ago. See the defensive backs jump that? And Jake Standiford, the former walk-on and brother of John, who was a great receiver in mm -hmm. Purdue for years, makes a nice play. Very innovative offense, spread offense, installed by Joe Tiller at West Lafayette. Fake to Sheets. Painter flushed from the pocket. And stopped for a loss of one by Trevor Laws and others. Abby Amiri there, too. And they say uh, that Curtis Painter has a strong arm, but his biggest asset is his coolness under fire, his even demeanor. He's a very calm guy. He talks to his players, his coaches, and I think that's a real asset for a quarterback as it can get hot and fast and furious under center and playing in the Big Ten. But Joe Tiller was saying, hey, his calmness is a good thing because you're going to have moments that are really, really ugly. And as a quarterback, you just can't get too emotionally high or low. Second and 11. Sheets in motion, empty backfield. Slant, drilled, complete to Bryant. Dorian Bryant hangs on for a gain of 13. Dorian Bryant is a tough guy to cover. Place their slot receiver is like a leaf in the wind. Has that kind of quickness. Good uh, throw there by Curtis Painter. Virtually every play is in shotgun formation by Curtis Painter. So he has a good view downfield and can find Dorian Bryant. They, they have a route where they just call win, and it's W-I-N. Dorian Bryant just beats your guy anywhere. Bryant leads the Big Ten with right at seven receptions a game, the number he had last year to lead the conference. Pitch it on the option to Sheets, who walks in for the touchdown. His 11th of the year. He leads the nation in scoring, tied for the lead in scoring, averaging 15 points a game. Corey Sheets on a beautiful drive by the Boilermakers. Absolutely efficient drive, good running, power running by Corey Sheets, some good pass plays by Curtis Painter. Got it started by the long play to Lyman. So good mix and great execution. Big leg, uh, Bill Leg, the offensive coordinator, good calls, and he got it done on that drive. Well done. Chris Summers will attempt the extra point. He's 19 of 20 this season. And boots it up and through. Good mix so, of plays there. Yeah, it was. Six plays, Pat, covering 86 yards to tie the game 7-7. Painter in that last drive, three for three. Yeah, 86 yard touchdown drive. That's a look at Walls, who is deep to receive the summer's kick. Short kick taken at about the six yard line by Walls. The string tackle tripped him up as he falls forward. And let's check in now with sideline reporter Lewis Johnson. Lewis? All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Well, before the game, I talked with Purdue head coach Joe Tiller and asked him what did he want to establish early here in the hostile territory of Notre Dame Stadium. He said, really, Lewis, I just want to try and find a little rhythm on offense and defense. Things not looking so good the first two series, but now much better. And as you look up overhead, Tom, you'll see the threatening clouds hanging over the stadium. There's a weather front that's moving in from central Wisconsin, crossing the lake, expected to get here about halftime. Maybe only see about a tenth of an inch of rain. And so we'll watch that as the game develops. Tom? All right, here's Brady Quinn tossing and caught by Samarja. Makes a nice 
yard after the catch. That's what uh, the Purdue coaches told us they had to eliminate, yards after catch. That one, 18 yards. Yeah, that one Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, you know, they're going to throw it and they're going to catch it, but we have to tackle these big receivers right when they catch it. And they gained, what, seven, eight yards after the catch? Maybe even more than that, Yeah, Tom. more than that, I think, as Samarja finally wrestled down by Brandon Irwin. Jeff Samarja is almost 200 pounds. There's Brock Spack. All Big Ten linebacker. We said we got to tackle those guys after they catch it and then survive Notre Dame's deep shot because they're going to take five to seven shots down the field. Irish first down just across their 40. It's a 7-7 game. Walker cut back. And tackled after a short gain. Set up a second down and about eight yards to go as you look at that yellow line. Our first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. First downs, the Irish doubling them up, but Purdue looked good on that last drive as Painter was three for three for 75 yards, hitting three different receivers. Now the Irish trying to answer to regain the lead. Quinn's pass in traffic to his tight end Carlson. Just found a place right there to stop down with the defenders around him. And then George Hall makes the stop. And in case you missed it today, be sure to visit NBCSports.com a half hour before every NBC Notre Dame telecast for the Vonage Notre Dame countdown to kickoff. Everything you need to know for the upcoming game, previews, video, interviews. And, of course, after the game, you can see Coach Weiss's live post-game press conference and the opposing coach as well. All of that is at NBCSports.com. You know, Tom, Joe Walters was saying uh, before the game on, on the show that he thought Notre Dame had a, as they get the first down, kind of a cakewalk with the schedule. I think they better watch out for UCLA when the Bruins come in here. A very athletic team. Well, you better watch out for Purdue, too. We just uh, saw on their last drive how efficient they can be in scoring points. You know, it's interesting as we looked at Notre Dame last week, you know, it looked kind of ugly, but they st on, a, on a bad day, they still scored 33 points on offense. Right. And Brady Quinn off to a perfect start, four for four, 48 yards. Fake it to Walter. Quinn looks deep downfield and throws for Samarja, who misses on the diving attempt. That's another one of those miscommunications between Jeff Samarja and Brady Quinn. They spent a lot of time together this week with Charlie Weiss. Charlie usually just spends time with his quarterback, Brady Quinn. This week he had Samarja, he had Ryan, uh, Raymond McKnight, and Quinn all spend time together trying to work on the timing, but he was open. It was just it was just missed. He even juggled the practice schedule a bit after it already been printed, and Coach Weiss with some personal attention for his receivers, working on the timing, he said, the timing of the passing game. One saying tomato, the other saying tomato. Quinn. This time, it's Carlson that goes up top to make the big catch. He was wide open across the middle, tackled inside the 25 by Justin Scott. A gain of 25 to Carlson. <laughs> There's some big targets here. How about John Carlson? He is 6'6". This thing was thrown at 7'6", and he still got it. You know, we talked about what a great athlete he was in high school, played football, basketball, even tennis. How would you like to see that up at the net? <laughs> All 6'6 of John Carlson Jr. And nearly 260 pounds. Boy, had two big and long catches last week. One a 62-yard touchdown catch so he can really get up the field. Irish first down. McKnight made a nice move. Spun down at the 13-yard line. Yeah, that, that was one of those plays that looked play because that was uh, called as a run in the huddle. And then Brady Quinn sees loose coverage. He says, I'm going to give my big old receiver, Rayma McKnight, McKnight, a chance. Almost tipped by Anthony Spencer. But everybody was blocking run. Everybody thought it was going to be a run. But Brady Quinn saw the coverage. So did Rayma McKnight. They read it together and picked up the first down. 11-yard gain. There's the current drive. Productive again for the Irish, as was their opening possession. Stalled a bit on their second possession. And inside the final minute of the first quarter. Carlson in motion. Walker, big hole. Darius Walker for the touchdown. Walker through a huge hole open by that offensive line. Yeah, Ryan Harris, Dan Santucci, the left guard. Watch it over here. Big hole right in there. 
And then a good cut by Darius Walker. Good eyes, good vision, but really led the way by Ryan Harris's block and Dan Santucci. Carl Joya for the extra point. And it's good. Start the second quarter at Notre Dame Stadium with the Irish leading the Boilermakers 14-7. Today's game brought to you by Comcast. First play of the second quarter will be Purdue with a second and seven. Four wide receiver formation. And movement up front. Chris Fromm of the Irish came across. He was drawn off by... That's Winari. Uchi Winari called for the false start. The fifth-year player from Garland, Texas. A very uh, veteran offensive line for the Boilermakers. And that's one of the reasons they rank 10th in total offense, 5th in scoring. This is, you know, Joe Tiller for really a decade has had very innovative offenses and scored a lot of points. Sometimes they haven't quite matched up defensively, but they've always been good offensive teams. Painter drills, and it's caught by Lyman. And he has a Purdue first down in Duke Way after 14 yards as Painter wound up and used that strong arm. Yeah, let's talk about the last touchdown drive and how they kind of spread it around. This was the prior drive where they scored the long pass to Lyman, then a power run, then the fake bubble screen, good call and execution, the pass to Standerford, and then the little pitch to Corey Sheets. So they mixed the plays perfectly and got a great balance of it to the score. That last Lyman reception, good for a first down. He's caught uh, two balls for 53 yards. They should keep him track. Hand it to Taylor. Back up running back, and he rips off a big game before Zibikowski gets him to the turf. It's 11 yards and another Jason Purdue Taylor first down. Yeah, Jason Taylor is going to have a nice season, I think, this year for the Boilermakers. Really plays about a third of the half. Well, what a nice hole there. Robbie Powell and Jordan Grimes, you know, lead the way for Jason Taylor. But a J.C. transfer. Yeah, a lot of people thought he was too small to play. They're delighted to have him, and a very good receiver as well. Curtis Painter, the quarterback of the Boilermakers, has hit five of six for 91 yards to four different receivers today. Rolls has another completion. This is Camacho. Camacho sandwiched as he falls inside the 30 by Crum and Nduque. Another big game for the Boilers. That one covered 14. Boy, you, don't you just love the design, the, the way they mix it so well, the run, the pass, outside. You know, that inside, when you have that good inside running game, which they demonstrated so far today, it allows these little fakes and then the fullback coming out in the flat Camacho when he was wide open. So good design and great execution. Six of seven, both sides of the field. Brady Quinn and Curtis Painter. Efficient quarterback play today. Hand the ball off that time to Taylor. Stacked up. Gain of a couple of yards. Crum and Nduque. One of the things the coaches like so much about Jason Taylor is, you know, not a lot of wasted motion. He's kind of a one-cut and go guy. And as we've watched tape of him, every time he, he gets tackled, he's always seeming to fall forward and get stopped. He's always picking up, you know, a yard, yard and a half, two yards after that contact. Second and long for the Boilermakers. Painter under pressure hit as he delivers. And it's incomplete. A couple of tough hits that time. Taylor was the intended receiver, and Abby Amiri was uh, bearing down on Painter, hit him just as he delivered the ball. Yeah, you got Abby Amiri here, and you also have number 18 in Duke Way coming in the right side, his, to his right. And he ran right around Sean Sester. And I tell you, Painter did a good job of getting rid of that ball and avoiding the sack. Unfortunately, still got hit. <laughs> So third and nine. And again, I'd be looking for Dorian Bryant. He's the guy in the slot. Painter's looking for him. And through his hands, Painter threw it a little hard and high as he took another hit. Yeah, he had him. He had Dorian Bryant. And I think it was one of those win routes. You know, he just said, hey, beat whatever coverage you have. And Victor Abiyamari for the second straight play gets upfield very, very quickly and beats Sean Sester. So a field goal attempt upcoming on fourth down for the Boilermakers. Summers has hit five of six field goals. His long 43 yards. 
Pretty good story. He was a walk-on who just kind of showed up this past July and earned the job. Scheduled to go on scholarship in January. That's a 44-yard attempt, which is no good. Wide to the right. That would have been his longest of the season. It goes wide right. And the score remains. Notre Dame 14 and Purdue 7. Leading 14-7 as they take over the football. And how about that? 27. Excuse me, run to pass ratio 12 to 7. That, that's the kind of, you know, if Charlie Weiss could, he'd run it 40 times a game. And the reason is there, that, that play calling, they're averaging six yards on first down. They emptied the backfield there and get the pass to John Carlson. Well, last week was a miracle comeback by the Fighting Irish. And East Lansing, Jeff Samarja makes the big play. And in fact, all the stars, McKnight, Quinn with five touchdown passes, and Lambert with a game-winning interception as the Irish score 19 in the fourth quarter to beat Michigan State. You know, you forget how horrible the weather was, too. Down by 16 with about nine minutes left. Darius Walker. Plowing ahead for a first down. Yeah, so they're averaging six yards on first down. So you're not seeing really that third and long that every coach and every play caller hates. And uh, much, you know, better rhythm. They were terribly outscored before in the first quarter to, before today. So they're kind of uh, on plan in sequence today, much unlike the last two weeks. what uh, Walker's production was in that opening quarter. Fake it to him here, and Quinn passes the ball. McKnight with a shoestring catch. First down, Irish had covered 13. You know, Brady Quinn had a little trouble throwing the ball to his left last week. He's on target today. Brock's back the defensive coordinator was talking to us about that. We kind of noticed that tape as we watched, but boy, that's just a drill shot. Well-thrown ball that time to Raymond McKnight. But missed a couple of easy guys to his left last week, but they, they thought that was more the, the receivers perhaps not running the routes at the correct depth, which yeah. caused the incompletion. That's what Coach Weiss said. Why he worked on the timing this week in practice. Saw the pitch. Walker draws the crowd. Good pursuit by the Purdue defense. They get a gang tackle of Darius Walker and throwing to his left. Yeah, this is a little bit of a struggle the last couple of weeks. This was against Michigan, his very first pass. This was against Michigan State. Again to Carlson, that was his first throw. And then a quick out to Raymond McKnight. Now it looks like it's, you know, all poor throws. That one was a poor decision by Brady Quinn. But a lot of it is the receivers, you know, running at 12 yards when they're supposed to be running at 10. So that's why Charlie Weiss had Brady Quinn and his starting wide receivers all together this week in the entire week of practice. And he's 4-4-4 four, 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 going to his left today. He'll set up a screen this time to Walker. Two Purdue defenders ran into each other, and Walker has a first down. Spencer finally tracked him down after a 12-yard jaunt by Darius Walker, who's been the featured offensive player today. You know, sometimes his contributions are overlooked, but a very good receiver, you know, durable runner. And, and this is what we saw so much of last year, you know, running on first down or play action, you know, but getting in that second and five where you, your whole playbook's available, and it's a pretty extensive playbook for Coach Weiss. <laughs> but using Darius Walker on the screen as well. Coming into the game, Walker had equaled Samarja's reception total, 23, tie for the lead. No pressure on Quinn, he goes for the end zone, and McKnight, incomplete. Today, the freshman Royce Adams was beaten, but kind of recovered. Royce Adams, an 18-year-old freshman, number 10, watching the recovery speed. That ball should have been caught. Perfect yep. throw by Brady Quinn, just dropped by Raymond McKnight. Let it bounce off his face mask right there and couldn't hold on. Second down. So second and ten for Weiss, the play caller of the Irish. Thought he had one there. Now Quinn changing the play. Game or the play clock down to five, so he had plenty of time. Walker, nice cut using his blockers well. And close to another first down for the Irish. 
Well, close to 100 yards for Darius Walker. Remember talking to Ryan Harris yesterday, the left, the left tackle, saying, hey, that's, that's one of our benchmarks. Can we get Darius Walker 100 yards? Good block here, as we just talked about, by Ryan Harris. Very patient run. See, his eyes are in his head. They're always up and looking for the next cut, the next opportunity. It's probably uh, as patient a runner yeah. as we've seen. And then good footwork at the end. 14-7 game. Notre Dame with a first down at the Purdue 25-yard line. Darius Walker has already accounted for 100 yards of total offense in this first half. 74 on the ground, 34 through the air. It's George West in motion. They faked it to West on the end of round. He scored a touchdown on that earlier, remember, and this time they hand it to Walker. Just to keep you, make sure you're paying attention. Yeah, absolutely. In the first uh, play of the game, first drive of the game, they faked it to Walker, handed it. On the reverse to West, and he scored that time the reverse. Well, you know, Tom, good play callers are always setting up the next play, right? You know, you, you, you call a play, you hope, you obviously hope that that particular play is successful, but you're always thinking about the next play as well. Darius Walker has touched the ball 67% of the time so far in the first half, 18 of the 27 plays. McKnight pushed out of bounds around the five by Royce Adams picking on the freshman corner for 16 yards you know we were watching Royce Adams who's going to be a pretty good corner in the in the Big Ten but watch how he's turned into the quarterback I don't think you can get turned and cover the out route when you're you know you're that turned into the quarterback he had to turn all the way around and just too easy I think a throw to throw it out against a corner like that who has position like that Royce Adams from South Euclid Ohio was coached at Glenville High School by Ted Ginn Sr., the father of the Ohio State wide receiver, Cleveland area. First and goal, Irish. Has a play action fake, and Quinn for the touchdown to McKnight. Well, Raymond McKnight dropped one earlier. He got his pause on this one. Watch this little smash route, they call it. The inside and then back out beats Vincent easily. Big body, Raymond McKnight. And great protection for Brady Quinn. And they get another completed throw. I think he's, what, five for five now, throwing the ball to his left. And getting a little uh, face time with the referee is Brady Quinn. And uh, pretty the, extra, the extra point by Joya is good. Ground, are they? Yeah, Rex Grossman having a great start this year. He's thrown three, uh, six touchdown passes already. See, they in Seattle both at 3 0. Oh. Sean Alexander, broken foot, probably will not play, we're told. But Brian Urlacher will be there for Chicago, stuffing up the middle. Yeah, and it starts 7 o'clock Eastern with Football Night in America. Bob Chris Sterling in the bus. As Corey Sheets gets the first down call for the Boilermakers in Duque. With the stop for the Irish, Joe Tiller almost needs to score right here to not let the game get away from him. Yeah. Well, you know, he has, what, a 4-5 and five record against the Irish here in his 10th year. He's had, a, I think, a real nice career. He didn't, at Purdue, doesn't get necessarily the top guys, but coaches them up, coaches them very, very well. And his offense are always capable of scoring a lot of points. The ball to Keller is tied in, who's been held in relative check today by the Irish defense. He is a very valuable weapon for the Boilers. Takes it for a first down with a seven yard reception. You are absolutely right. Dustin Keller has just been amazing. The first four games this year, he's averaged 20 yards a catch. I mean, he's had three catches over 50 yards. Just a big athletic guy. You know, in high school, is a great high jumper. Went 6'10 in high school he's a high jumper he is a threat down the field converted wide receiver and he looks like one when he yeah, right. catches the football painter changing the play who's up you here who's been giving him some trouble in the pass rush blitz comes picked up and it's 
Lyman with the reception and breaking a tackle to the 35-yard line. Selwyn Lyman's had a real nice day, hasn't he? Yes, that's his third catch. That one covered 27 yards. He's got three receptions for 81 yards. Yeah, a big old target at 6'4", and for a guy who's you know, 6'4", 210, pretty good after the catch. Those yak yards, the yards after catch, breaks a lot of tackles because he's so big. Well, he's going to become a uh, you know more and more of a threat for Curtis Painter. Dorian Bryant really is key guy now, but Selwyn Lyman coming on. Broke the tackle of Walls, and then Induque and Zibikowski had to track him down. Painter setting up a screen to Keller. Dodging oh. would-be tacklers, then lowering his head, barreling Fumble. his way. Fumbles the football, still free. <laughs> and Notre Dame has it. Justin Keller had it, a nice little run going. It was Terrell Lambert. It was Lambert indeed. Yeah. yeah, Lambert ripped it free. And the guy who had the two interceptions last week, good tackle by Terrell Lambert, pops the ball out. And then, and I think it's Lambert number 20 yeah, who gets the recovery. It. So two interceptions a week ago, a fumble recovery today. First turnover of the game goes the way of the Irish, already up 21-7. Wouldn't it be great to hear exactly yard line? The right tackle, Paul Duncan, is in now for the second straight series, spelling the freshman Sam Young. Yeah, he plays about one third. Sam Young plays the plays two thirds of the game. Quinn play action fake. Shoots it downfield and caught on one knee by Chase Anastasio for a gain of 15, his first catch of the season. And now I think he's seven of eight throwing to his left, Brady Quinn. So a good drill route again. Another out cut against a corner facing in. See how difficult it is for that uh, corner to get turned to cover that out, Tom. It's just really difficult to get turned and cover that out. They've caught at least two of those, maybe three. The play at the line of scrimmage, and it's a gift to Walker using his blockers and picking it away forward for three or four yards. Dan Dick just trying to force that ball out, the middle linebacker. He was the first to hit him, and then uh, a crowd of white shirted Purdue defenders. You mentioned Dan Dick from Louisville, Kentucky, likes to go to the Derby every year. Took a bunch of his teammates down there to the infield last year, had a good time. He's right in there. From a real athletic family, Dan, his. Uh, Dad Sam was a soccer player at Quincy University and played professional soccer as well. His mom, Mary Beth, a volleyball player at St. Xavier University, and his brother Brian, a soccer player at West Virginia University. I like the fact that he, li he likes the infield at the Derby. The yeah. Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Didn't want to get up there in no those stands and get all dressed up. Just t shirt, jeans, and the infield. You look good out there in the infield, Pat. It's just right down your alley. Darius Walker for a first down. Look who got him, Anthony Spencer, a right? hustling Anthony Spencer. I mean, th this guy just makes plays everywhere. I mean, we've seen him rushing the passer, almost tipped the ball right up here. And again, just a really good chaser. I was watching the tape last week in Minnesota. Made a lot of plays like this. We had a run all the way across the field. This wasn't as long a run, but just hustling. Again, big game last week, big game two years ago right in this stadium. Wayne, Indiana, five sacks on the year. Walker now has gained 91 yards on 17 carries, getting a touchdown. And this is this is what Charlie Weiss had envisioned when this season started: controlling the clock, using Darius Walker in the running game to get themselves in second and four and five, and then using the brilliant right arm of Brady Quinn to those wide receivers. Hadn't worked out earlier in the year, but this one's kind of according to schedule. Season average 56.8. Today already uh, approaching 100 yards. They had 99 yards in their opening win against Georgia Tech, where he was really the difference in the game for the Irish. Last year he had seven games over 100 yards rushing. Fake to Walker. Quinn with plenty of time, and there's Walker on the crossing route, covered by a, a linebacker, Kegler. Makes the reception and then hauled down. The fourth catch of the day for Darius Walker, the 27th 
on the year. Remember, he set a record last year for receptions by an Irish running back. I think it was with 43. And there are those 700 yard rushing games a season ago. He'll get all today, uh, running game yeah. and passing game. I think he did get enough credit. You'll be talking yeah. about Brady Quinn and Samarja and Raymond McKnight, those guys. And, and he has become an all around player, even uh, in pass protection, which was uh, a weak point for him his freshman year. He used to come out in passing situations. On the slant, good hands by McKnight to hold on despite the hit from Vincent. Yeah, pretty good coverage by Terrell Vincent, number 34, but again, that screened, that using his body as a big screen. Slant to his left, really throwing the ball well to his left today. That was actually a little bit yeah. behind nice Raymond catch, McKnight. Yeah. Nice catch by McKnight to go uh, behind him to catch it. And then Terrell Vincent just couldn't see him. He's 5'9", 175 pounds, just couldn't find the ball. Irish first down at the Boiler 25. To the end zone. McKnight. It kind of was like a punt as it yeah, turned well, out. Well, you know, he, he let him go up and get it, huh? How many times over the last yeah. year and a half has he done that? One of those guys do. And Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, said, hey, we have to survive the shots down the field that Notre Dame's going to throw. Could have been maybe even a push off yep, by Raymond been. McKnight. But they're going to throw five to seven of those a day in uh, a game and hoping that Samarja or McKnight are going to catch two of them. Wynn facing a second down. Three times they've gone deep. But you know what? They don't get discouraged. They'll keep chucking it down the field. Well, it makes you think about it and defend it. This time. McKnight breaks it off underneath, yeah, has a, it in front of Vincent. And that's a nice combo, right? You run the, the go route, and you come right back to the out route, which they've had trouble covering. Now that's now the fourth out they've caught. 12 yards on that one. So the sequence, look at the protection that Brady Quinn is getting. Just there, no one even close to Brady Quinn on that throw. 18 first downs now by the Irish. Dan Santucci, left guard, doing well. Protecting his quarterback. First down carry by Walker. Darius met head on and taken down by Kegler. We are just talking about Dan Santucci. That time he kind of pulled around. The, the former play, he protects his quarterback. This time he leads the way for Darius Walker. Big old number 50. We were talking to him last year, and he said, yes, I just love it when we run the ball. It's, Remember he was talking yep. to us about his his mother Sue. He says, you know, she talks up there in the stands. I didn't really pay attention much, but you always know that I'm supposed to protect the quarterback. If she sees Brady Quinn go down, she gets upset. Dan from Chicago. He'll be watching that Bears game tomorrow night. It's a Bears fan is Darius Walker. Now 19 carries, 100 yards rushing. Trying to add to it here. And didn't get much. I tell you, the Irish have not faced many third downs today, but this is a big third down for the Purdue defense. Two minutes left here in this first half. Down by 14, they need to stop. Alex McGee stacking up the middle of the line of scrimmage that last time to stop Walker. I think Brady's going to let the clock run down and use one of their two remaining timeouts. Play clock is down to seven. Yeah, they yeah. got a, a lot of big old tall receivers to. Irish calling timeout with a third down and three at the five yard line of the Boilers. I've always thought this would be an area of the field where John Carlson would be such a featured guy. Hasn't really been thus far this year, but your 6'6 tight end is such a big target over the middle of the field. Boilers come on with five defensive backs. Four of them are freshmen. Then changing the play and Carlson resetting. Around the fade to McKnight. No good. Yeah, that, that's a good check by Brady Quinn. I mean, he had something else called salt. They, they were going, the, the Boilermakers were going to blitz. Brought Carlson in for protection purposes and tried to get McKnight on the fade. 
Good coverage that time by Royce Adams. So fourth down and Carl Joya comes out the first time that Notre Dame has not scored a touchdown in the red zone today. 23 yard field goal attempt. And it's a fake. Yesterday when we were talking to Charlie Weiss wouldn't tell us the exact play but he said you know I've got something planned if I see it I'm going to call it. Had his special teams coach on the back. And Jeff Samarja. I mean, you talk about a well designed play. Brian Polian who's a special teams coach has had two big calls for plays designed this year. One was a fake punt. This is a fake field goal. Big block by Carlson. Carlson yeah. And an easy touchdown by Samarja. So the fake field goal results in a touchdown and they are perfect on scoring touchdowns in the red zone today. Joya with the extra point is good. Last year it was really against Purdue when they got things really kicked off and their offense really got going. That was the game that really kind of turned the engine on for their offense. In fact you know Brady Quinn uh, has had excellent games against the Boilermakers and uh, got his first career start uh, against the Boilers. That wasn't the one he would remember perhaps but uh, just because he started but his yeah. performance wasn't the best. Well, he threw four interceptions in that one but over his career up until today he's thrown for almost twelve hundred yards against Purdue. The last year threw for four forty and three touchdowns. I mean if he does get invited to the Heisman ceremony may invite the Purdue defensive backs to join him. <laughs> Cruel. Well he's facing a lot of freshmen today and they've been taking advantage of it. Well it's been the mix too. They've run the ball so well. Well here's a you know real opportunity for Curtis Painters. This is 10th start. Minute uh, 11 left. He still has two timeouts and some pretty good wide receivers. Iris get Anthony Bernaglia in at a linebacker spot. Remember Travis Thomas not playing because of injury today. Stepping up in the pocket, Painter throws it away. Dorian Bryant only with one catch today. Got 14 last year against the Irish. Our first and ten line brought to you by Xerox. He's a guy, Dorian Bryant, the boy, just you, know, you got to give him some chances. We, you know, we talked about that win route, a guy that uh, is just so quick. And uh, he's here in the slot for them. Really good work in the middle right there. And Duque with the blitz. They pick it up, giving Painter time for Lyman, and he's got it between receivers. And he's off to the races. He took the defenders down as they collided, and he'll waltz in for the touchdown. Selwyn Lyman, Walls and Zibikowski ran into each other. They fell off, and Lyman was off on an 88-yard jaunt. How about the half of Lyman? Four catches, now 166 yards. It's a pretty good year for some guys. Selwyn Lyman has become their big play guy today. And, you know, give the Purdue uh, staff and Curtis Painter some credit. Dorian Bryant, the guy who caught 14, he's been taken away. So what do you do? You go to Lyman. The results are 166 yards of receptions and a touchdown. A key one right before halftime. Summers will attempt the point after. As the Boilermakers picked up the Irish Blitz. That one curves through the uprights and is good off the toe of Summers. We'll have another look. Here is Lyman. Here is Bryant. And again, you're just going to see him run right down the field, and the two defenders kind of run right into each other. Yeah, if you look right right now, these two you know two uh, Irish defenders kind of hit one another, allows Lyman not only catch it but break away. So you know we talked about Notre Dame giving their big uh, receivers some chances down the field. That's what Curtis Painter is doing with Selwyn Lyman. So 88 yards on the Purdue score with just 50 seconds left in the half. And what a big game Lyman is having. And the yards after first contact, how about 62? We talked about those, those kind of special yards. And we talked about the yak yards after catch. 44 yards in the air, 44 yaks on that one. And some yucks on the sideline for the Boilermakers. Oh, that's good. That's good, Tom. Summers will kick off. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Charlie Weiss plays it. 50 seconds remaining. Experienced quarterback and one timeout. 
Taken by West. He's got some. Huh? Spun to the turf when it looked like he had a seam. For a moment, Keith Smith, one of those freshman defensive backs on the tackle for on special teams for the Boilers. 39 seconds. I would not be surprised at all to see him be uh, aggressive and try to get some balls down the field. Again, he's facing the 115th ranked pass defense in, in the land. A couple of freshmen out there playing right now. True freshmen. Actually, three right now. One, two, and three. Quinn goes underneath to Walker. Racing for the sideline. Ducks out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That is complete. Seven yard gain on first down with 30 seconds even on the clock. Kind of a solid first half for Darius Walker. Do we talk about as a runner with 103 yards? How about five catches for another 42? Quinn, same thing the other way, same direction as Walker. Goes out of bounds and then draws a flag for the late hit. That's two of them, right? Against yeah. So those are just silly penalties. And you, you know, you get yourself right back in the ball game. 15 yards, number 10 on the defense. First down. Royce Adams, the freshman, with the late hit, and suddenly the Irish are in Purdue territory. In third straight pass, a little short crossing route to Darius Walker. Across the other direction, uh, the play oh, before. I, I don't think you call that penalty, do you? Yeah, that's no, that's, that's a little that's, bit. Yeah, yeah, that's not yeah. penalty. Here's Walker again, dumped out of the backfield, fighting for the sideline, can't get out of bounds. Kegler makes the stop. 14 seconds. Timeout, Irish. That's the final Notre Dame timeout of this first half. It comes with 14 seconds on the clock. Carl Joy, I think, at field goal, his longest this year is, what, 35 yards, which means you'd have to get to uh, about the 18-yard line. And that Toyota halftime show will send you back to New York for Jimmy and Peter. Bunch of good college football games today going on, too. Yep, there are some indeed, and they'll preview that battle of the NFL unbeatens tomorrow night in Chicago's Soldier Field between the Bears and the Seahawks. Brady Quinn has hit 18 of 22 in this first half. Darius Walker has been uh, the featured performer both uh, in receiving and in rushing. He's already over 100 yards in the first half and has seven catches. Harry's at the line, ready to go. Samarja resets to the right. Flag is down. Quinn chased from the pocket. He'll go out of bounds. Boy, Anthony Spencer nearly got him on a three-man rush. I don't, <laughs> I'm not sure Brady knew he was back there. Boy, he is fast, Anthony Spencer. It's like a false start uh, by the Irish, or maybe Samarja wasn't set. All I know is they had a three-man pass rush, did Purdue, and Anthony Spencer still got there and gave Brady Quinn all he could handle. Got a hold, too, against the Irish. Illegal motion, number 83 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Holding, number 68, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot will be accepted. Second down. Well, I'll tell you, Anthony Spencer got held and still put the pressure on Brady Quinn up here. That's Harris. It'll be called for the hold. Yeah. And Samarja didn't get set. He was. And there's the hold. hold. <laughs> Absolutely. He got his money. But but look at the catch up speed like a, almost like a defensive back. Seven so, seconds on the clock. And they are producing it is. Prevent a defense you can get. <laughs> Guys all the way down. And they still sacked him. It was a sack by Spencer. 
So Anthony Spencer had a heck of a first half. Well, that was a heck of a first half, too, though, by the Notre Dame offense. Their most first downs in a game this season was 22 against Penn State. Today, 22 in this first half. And they will go to the locker room with a 28-14 lead. Let's go to Lewis. All right, Tom, thanks a lot. Well, Coach, describe the difference in the feeling this week at halftime versus last week and how the offense now seems to be rolling. I'm not real happy right now. We just gave up a touchdown with a minute to go and a half with a three-touchdown lead on a, on a long pass right now. So I think that there's going to be a sense of urgency going in there. I think both sides of the ball made a bunch of plays, but to give up one, you know, with a minute to go right before halftime, you know, it's got to create a sense of urgency. And coach, also, there's a report of severe weather coming here for the second half uh, out of the West right now. How might that affect the play calling in the second half? Well, I mean, if they have severe weather, they just clear the stadium and then we'd go back into the locker room. So okay. it wouldn't affect it too much. OK, that's a fair answer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lewis. 28-14 and Jimmy Roberts joined by Peter King in our New York studio coming up. And remember the halftime performances of both bands at NBC just across the 20 yard line by Mitchell Thomas. What a, uh, what a year Mitchell Thomas has had on special teams. Just saw him make that special teams tackle. Curtis Painter, you know, we talked so much about Brady Quinn. What a nice first half Painter had. He was 10 of 14, 230 yards, threw a touchdown, didn't throw an interception, managed the game pretty well. And as we said in the, you know, the Charles Schwab moments, this opening drive is really important for Curtis Painter and his teammates. And the Look at the uh, passer rating, Curtis Painter, 233, 169 for Brady. I had him at 231. <laughs> but, uh, maybe I've never been able to figure out how that works anyway. Just, it's good, though. It's yeah, good. Multiply by your phone number. Painter with a keep sliding down just short of the first down. Curtis Painter. Let's go down to Lewis. Hey, Tom, I talked to Joe Tiller coming out on the field and asked him about his big adjustments for the second half, and he said no big adjustments. He told his defense, just tackle. He said the Notre Dame offensive line is opening up a scene for Darius Walker, and then his guys are overreacting. So he said, calm down and just tackle. And as for his offense, he said, simply hold on to the ball. No more turnovers. Tom? Second down and two under those ominously gray skies. Play action fake, and Painter chased from the pocket, just dumps it off. Hits the ground incomplete. It'll bring up third down for the Boilers. Well, remember we were talking to Bill Legg, the uh, co-offensive coordinator, about Curtis Painter and how he's managing the game better week to week. I mean, there was another example of it. Just a, there's Bill Legg. And just a heads-up play that time by Curtis Painter. Absolutely nothing there. Knowing the situation, it's, you know, it's third and short now. Just don't force it. And he has a chance of picking up a, you know, reasonable, reasonably manageable third down situation. Boilers looking for their first third down conversion. Bryant in motion. Now lines up right next to Painter, who fumbled the snap, but whips it out and dropped. <laughs> dropped by Greg Orton. It hadn't even started raining yet. I mean, Greg Orton just absolutely dropped that one. And that's a key play. Opening drive. You have the first down made. Now, now Greg Orton is, you know, suffering from a hip pointer. Didn't start today. Ordinarily is, but that, that's not a hip pointer. That's just a drop ball. Would have been a first down. Instead, it's a punting situation, the second punt of the game for Purdue. Notre Dame punted once in the first half. That's Tom Zivikowski. You don't see this guy fair catch much, do you? Armstrong punts to Zivikowski, who is uh, cut down after a couple of yards on the return by Fabian Martin. Only three yards on the return after the punt covered third. Irish takeover. The Irish and the Boilermakers. Today's game brought to you by Comcast. 28-14, first possession, second half for Notre Dame. Hand it to Darius Walker. Same thing we saw most of the first half. Hey, Tom, let's go back and look at that last punt return. I, I think uh, Tommy Zibikowski really, well, he did really take a shot. And he kind of hurt, looked like his left shoulder, hit helmet. by Anthony Haywood. Helmet yeah. to helmet. And it came up, and, and then Charlie Weiss is saying a late hit. And it came off. Uh, he was attended to by some trainers. A little later, he was kind of telling his teammates, hey, I'm okay. No problem. Helmet to helmet hit. Well, the Irish uh, put it in play. The offense back out there after their best first half of the season in most categories. Fake to Walker. Quinn rolls. Delivers a pass. Caught by Samarja. Undercut at the 45-yard line, a gain of six, just short of the first down by Terrell Vincent. Yeah, good read by Terrell Vincent. I mean, that had, uh, you know, the yards after catch. Watch down here, Vincent, how he kind of recovers. Yards at a catch written all over it. A little bootleg pass. 
Vinci kind of stays at home, then a really good open field tackle. If he doesn't get him down, he picks up another 12 yards. So Brock's back is saying, hey, get those big guys down. He did. Third down sneak by Brady Quinn. And it appears that he has the first down. Well, among the many things that Brady Quinn does well is quarterback sneak. He's pretty good at it. Well, he's strong. Yeah. Big old dude. This guy is uh, cut. I mean, he uh, has the body of a linebacker. Uh, he, he shaves his arms and legs too, right? Shaves, he shaves his arms and legs. Who's going to argue with him yeah. before the game? He said some of the other players now have started doing that. Well, he started in high school just kind of shaving his ankles, then he just kind of kept going further and further up and did the arms and the legs. Makes it feel a little faster, sleeker. Good in the pool, too. Faster, sleeper in the pool. Walk. Stacked up at midfield. Mike McDonald led the defensive charge for Purdue. And Dan Bick, uh, a piece of that tackle as well. And there's Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator. He said, You know, I know we're young, but I like this defense. He said, We're playing together, we're hustling, we're growing. You know, the statistically, they can really look bad, but he thinks by the end of the season, his younger players are really going to contribute. He's got some very athletic young corners. When Brock uh, played here for Purdue, he was making a tackle and was kicked in the head by one of his teammates. And so the next thing he knew, he woke up and they were going for two to win the game and did. Walker can't get around the corner because of Vincent's tackle. Yeah, two good plays by Terrell Vincent, the corner. Also George Hall, the middle linebacker. You know, we talked about Brock Speck. He was an all Big Ten linebacker at Purdue. And did a good job with his talent level. Look at Averill, number 32, making a, a play. They're really good linebackers all across the field for Purdue. Third down and seven for the Irish. Walker has been tough both in receiving and obviously in rushing with over 100 yards in the first half. Quinn chased, tackled as he let it go, and it's caught. There's McKnight who went up to catch it in traffic as Mc... 15 yards, McKnight with a catch as Brady Quinn, just as he was hit, rifled it downfield. You're talking about snaring the ball out of the air. Again, they, Purdue has not got much pressure on Brady Quinn today. Alex McGee did that time. Quinn is you know, elusive enough to get rid of him and throw the ball with enough zip over one defensive lineman. It was Anthony Spencer on that zone blitz step back. So that's a pretty good throw and catch by McKnight and Quinn. Nice plays by the pitcher and the catcher. Fake it to Walker. Quinn drills to Carlson across the middle. Dragged down by the back of the pads, short of the 10-yard line, but it went for 22. He is a big old guy that can get down the field, John Carlson. Played some basketball here at Notre Dame, was a walk-on basketball player as well, completely devoted to football. And boy, he is a threat in the middle. You know, you, you see the double coverage on the outside, which Notre Dame gets a lot because of Samarja and McKnight. And boy, that gives John Carlson some opportunities. His dad was his uh, high school basketball coach, Litchfield High School, Litchfield, Minnesota. And three times they won the Minnesota Class 2A basketball championship. And he also coached in tennis. And an assistant coach, offensive coordinator in football. Wasn't he? There's the touchdown to McKnight. Perfect in the red zone today and scoring touchdowns as Raymond McKnight makes the reception from Brady Quinn. Well, that one was too easy, wasn't it? It was. You know, it just shows you Purdue drops the third and three. It gives the Irish another uh, another possession. You know, this really Purdue should still have the ball, perhaps. Instead, the Irish take it, and then a wide open Raymond McKnight, and terrific protection for Brady Quinn. So that key drop on the first series of the second half by Purdue. Notre Dame gets the ball back and scores seven as Joya knocks through the extra points. Raymond McKnight, eight catches, 93 yards. That was his second gator. Lincoln, reach higher. And by Dell. It's much more technology. It's Adele. Thirty-five, fourteen. the Notre Dame lead as the Irish march down the field and the push-ups. 35 of them now, still early in the third. Raymond McKnight's second touchdown catch from number 10, Brady Quinn. And Ryan Burkhardt has it teed up to kickoff. And Corey Sheets deep 
for the Boilers. Takes a funny hop to Bryant. Managed to field it and cuts up the middle, cuts back to the outside, picks up another blocker. Finally ridden out of bounds by Farine. Leo Farine saved the touchdown, but a 40-yard return by Dorian Bryant. There's the Lincoln scoring drive. Eight plays, six, yeah, 64 yards. Brady Quinn hit all four of his passes. And Notre Dame converted twice on third down. Now spreading the ball around. Two wide receivers in the tight end, Carlson. And then finally to a wide open, and I mean wide open, Raymond Knight. Painter and the Purdue offense have some work to do now. And Painter scrambling out of the pocket and rambling for a first down. <laughs> out of bounds. It was a ramble. With Derek Landry in hot pursuit. So let's go to Lewis. Hey, Tom, the uh, weather situation is changing rapidly here in South Bend. I was talking to some of the folks at halftime, and we are expecting to catch the uh, northeast side of a thunderstorm cell considered severe as uh, in the next few minutes is packing heavy winds, lots of rain, maybe a little hail, and lightning. Now, if we have lightning strikes within five miles of the stadium, NCAA policy is the game will be stopped, the stadium will be cleared, and the storm could last up to 30 minutes, but we'll see what happens. Tom? But some more urgency in the Notre and the Purdue offense here too on the option Taylor Jason Taylor with a nice oh. run for the Boilers and it looks to be a first down but if Maurice Crum doesn't hustle over there I think Jason Taylor has a chance to take that one to out the house the middle linebacker Maurice Crum number 40 watch him chase this play because you you've got a lane right there that Mike Richardson misses him good block up top the right of the screen there's number 40. And uh, Leo Farine also in on the tackle. He apparently has replaced Darren Walls at a corner spot. Yeah, he's getting his first action on defense this year. Played some in nickel a year ago. Four wides. Oh, and the drop pass by Standiford. That was funny when the coaches said, hey, if you throw it to him, he'll catch it. But they threw it to him and he didn't. A couple of key drops in the second half already. Well, you know, Tiller's receivers. You're right, Tom. Notre Dame, they, they just have the capability of scoring so many points. You just can't waste opportunities. And Purdue did in the last one. Oh, there's another Bush push. You see that by Corey Sheets? <laughs> I, I got that one got, again, Tom. You've gotten the name. Given the name <laughs> now, huh? Yeah, Corey Sheets pushed the quarterback, Painter, for the first down. So Purdue does get the first down. Painter. 0 for 3 in the second half, but two of them have been dropped. Again, Bryant still just with one catch. Notre Dame's done a very good job with him. Handed up the middle to Sheets. Corey Sheets shaking tacklers, dives for a first down. Nice run. Mike Richardson covers him after 12. You know, Corey Sheets seems to be much more patient today. When we talked to him Thursday in West Lafayette, Tom Emery was saying, hey, I, I'm rushing it some. I, I've got to be a little bit more patient. And sometimes he says, I just listen to my offensive linemen. And said, hey, those offensive linemen tell me to be a little bit more patient. Hang in there. And that was a very patient run. And here comes the storm cell. Well, this is when you need some sheets. Sheets of rain coming down. <laughs> we'll see how many other oh, ways we can use it. Big time. <laughs> that matter as Painter yeah. finds Bryant. Only a second catch, but it's key. 13 yards and a Purdue first down. Oh, number 24, Corey Sheets got held out of the backfield. But nonetheless, Curtis Painter, good throw as he runs to his left. Good outcut by Dorian Bryant for the catch of the first down. That's a wet football, too, handled by Painter and by Bryant. Well, they played in Purdue played in some bad weather last week against Minnesota at home. This is their first road game of the season. They're at the 11 with a first down. Curtis Painter under pressure finds the man and then he loses the ball. It's incomplete. Dropped. An incomplete pass. Dropped by Dustin Keller, Tom. Normally the sure-handed Keller. That's a heck of a throw again by Curtis Painter. Hanging in, knew he was going to take a shot from Shenindu and Dukeway, the, the uh, safety number 18, coming right up the gut. He takes a shot, and then Keller just absolutely dropped him. Yeah, I think he had an eye on Chris yeah. Fromm, who was about to plant one on him. And the ball came free, incomplete, second down. Painter 
Oh. With a keep to the 10. And from, I'll tell you what, Tom, that's a touchdown if Chris Fromm doesn't make that tackle. Well, you, 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 you can't really see it, but I'll tell you, Chris Fromm stops. There's nobody behind Chris Fromm because Curtis Painter runs into the end zone easily. It'll bring up third down as the rain continues to pour from the heavens. Third down and nine. They can make a first down. And Notre Dame last week, in spite of the score, they played pretty good third down defense. Painter under pressure. Got rid of it and complete. Oh, Victor Abiyamiri right in his face. No chance. Yeah, the offensive line has had a trouble with Victor Abiyamiri today. Well, here he comes just to get a quick start. Just a little bull rush twice. He's run right by Sean Sester, the right tackle. So fourth down, and Joe Tiller is going to go for it. Trailing 35-14. Fourth down and nine. Six defensive backs for the Irish. Painter lost for the end zone. Broken up, intended for Orton. No flags down. How about Terrell Lambert making and another great play? Terrell Lambert defending for Notre Dame. Terrell Lambert was saying to us yesterday, his mother, Keetran, gave him all the confidence he ever needed to be defensive corner. Dame Stadium with the Irish taking over after holding Purdue on downs. And Quinn's first pass to McKnight. Snatched from the air at the 25-yard line with Royce Adams holding on for 16. Hey, Tim, let's go back and look at this other uh, last fourth down play. Watch right there. He gets pushed out of bounds. You see the field judge throw his hat down, and the line judge does it well. I mean, he was pushed out of bounds. If he, he can still come back inbounds and catch it, but it wasn't pass interference. Which Tiller wanted to hold and a... <laughs> what pass interference? You might have argued the hold. Ball has to be catchable, right? Is that a bounce? Yeah. Carried him out of bounds. McKnight just caught his ninth pass. Here's Walker with the reception out of the backfield. Ducks out of bounds. And for Darius Walker. That's eight catches now. Yeah. Five-yard gain on that one with Jared Swilling chasing him out of bounds. Well, that, that scene of Charlie Weiss right there looks reminiscent of last week yeah. against MSU. The score's a little bit different. Depends on what point of the game you're talking about. The scores. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. You know, you know, we were talking to Charlie yesterday about, about the rain because we expected it. You know, has a as you might expect, what he calls wristband two with all the plays they they run during the rain. A lot of finger pointing going on down there. There's the. Uh, Wristband with the play calls. Offsides, contact, number 90, five yard penalty, first down. Ryan Baker made contact. Purdue call for the offside as Baker goes to the sideline. Junior from Indianapolis. As you watch Brady Quinn, I remember yesterday talking to Ryan Harris, his left tackle, and he was saying, you know, he just. He's so meticulous in his preparation. You know, he, he prepares well, he practices well, and then he plays well. And he has today, throwing for two touchdowns and no interceptions. Penalties have been a problem this season for Notre Dame, only one today. Walker plows ahead to the 40-yard line. Meanwhile, Brady Quinn is having a big afternoon. He's not missed in the second half, six for six, and overall for the game, hitting at an 86% completion rate 24 of 28. That beats last year. I mean, he was 81% last year against Purdue when he threw for 440 yards, and he came out with 1130 left. He might have thrown for 1,000 last year. I mean, he came out with 1130 left in the game. Here he has the Irish at their own 40, just across the 40 with a second down. Well, they aren't really forcing the issue today. They came out with a real plan they stuck to. The score allowed them to do it. Behind McKnight incomplete. That's uh, two behind Raymond McKnight. Caught one earlier on the slant. Meanwhile, looks like the uh, storm has let up for the moment. 
Yeah. If it's that quick, is it still a storm? Uh, it's no longer Rain a showers. storm. Yeah. Yeah. Shower. Yeah. Didn't see any thunder or lightning associated with it. A big third down defensive play right now for Purdue. Five minutes, a little over five remaining in this third quarter. They they don't not only need a stop, they need a turnover on defense. Raymond McKnight with nine catches, a career high today. Quinn Walker dropped it. A little bit off target, but yeah. he was turning to go upfield, I think, before he secured the football. Yeah, I think Dan Bick had it, had it red, though, the middle linebacker for Purdue was over there. An outside blitz by Averill. So Price only a second punt of the game. He had seven last week. Punted pretty well in bad uh, circumstances, bad weather last week. He's punted pretty well in all circumstances, hasn't he? Yeah. Boots this one downfield. Oh, he got the flag. And got the uh, roughing, the kicker flag. Adams lets it go into the end zone. That and, was a uh, touchback. Tommy, he deserved an Oscar. <laughs> really. Give, Lawrence Olivier could have done it better. It's the five yard variety, I think. For the five and a 15. Jeff Price, you know, averaging 48 yards a punt this year has uh, really been a difference maker in terms of field position for the Irish. And has dropped five inside the 20. Although that one went into the end zone. Running into the kicker, number 10 of the defense. Five yard penalty, repeat, fourth down. Well, it'll be fourth and what, one now? It is the uh, five yard running into the kicker variety. You decide, Tom. Would you have it, called that? No. And it was so. uh, Jason Taylor that well, ran into him. And that's that pretty well sums it up. Yeah. Well, Brady Quinn's been awfully good on fourth down quarterback sneaks in the past. But last week in this situation, he threw a long pass to John Carlson. And the rain has begun again in earnest. High formation in the backfield. McConnell is the fullback. Walker the tailback. It's a pitch to Walker. Gets a block on the corner. Has the first down and more. Taken down by Bick. Chasing the play after a gain of 12. Well, a couple of drop passes by Purdue in the third quarter. I think a questionable call on that lead to the Eilidge Irish Deluge. Again, Raymond McKnight, who's had a big day as a receiver, is pretty good blocker. Perhaps their best as a wide receiver. Last week's game with Samar just scored that uh, touchdown in the middle of the look pass they have, Tom. It was the block by Raymond McKnight that sprung him. Walker's now rushed for 125 yards, looking for more. A little surprised we haven't seen some of uh, Manure Prince that, uh, who backs up Darius Walker. Thought we were going to see him some today. Manir Prince, the uh, freshman, speedy freshman, has four carries on the season. That's him. That is yeah. he, number 25. When you wear number 25, Rockets old number, you better be fast, right? That's what he did uh, in high school in Missouri. Quinn, after the play action fake, winds up and heaves downfield over the head of Jeff Samarja. Nice coverage by Terrell Vinson. Vinson's had a nice afternoon and uh, tackling, and that time a good coverage. Terrell Vinson. And for Quinn, only seven misses on the passing game in 31 attempts. You know, I think. You know, he's, uh, he's a good thrower. He's got all those physical uh, attributes, but I, I think what really he really has is a lot of mental toughness. Down 16 points last week in the fourth quarter. Never seemed uh, to be shaken. Here's one of those third downs. Fake the pass and hand to Walker. And a determined run by Darius Walker across the yellow line for the Irish first down. Yeah, they faked that little bubble or look pass, as they call it, handed the ball to Darius Walker. 
I mean, everything seems to be working. Good block up front by John Sullivan, the center. Kind of cleared the way. See the block by number 78. He actually chipped the tackle. Then the linebacker brought two different guys to John Sullivan. And then gives the first yeah. down signal. There's Big John. Some speculation that he's a very distant relative of New Rock. I don't know if you've heard that already. <laughs> and speculation. It's yeah, speculation. Brady Quinn says he's a heartthrob. Which is a tag applied to Brady at times. Here's Walker. Continues to add to his rushing total as Irwin chases him from the field of play. An Irish player down. Season high for Darius with the carries. Bob Morton is the injured Irish player. Here from Texas, Bob Morton. And while they tend to Bob Morton, we'll take a break. Timeout with 321 left in the third. 35-14 Irish. This game is coming to sharp focus for Charlie Weiss and his offense today. In the rain at Notre Dame Stadium. The injured player, Bob Morton, you'll remember his dad passed away, died of cancer just before the season began. He's out, being tended to on the bench. Replaced by Brian Mattis, a 6'6", 284-pound senior from Larksville, Pennsylvania. Oh. Quinn dodging the rush but can't stay away forever and is sacked by Cliff Averill. Justin Scott, the strong safety blitz, was there first. Averill filled him up. Averill's kind of a unique player. He plays both linebacker and sometimes defensive end. There he's coming right off the corner. There's the, the safety blitz, and then the defensive end, Cliff Averill, makes the sack. I read an article about Cliff Averill. They asked him, you know, is it difficult to go from linebacker to defensive end and chase the quarterback? He says, no, you just put your hand down on the ground and get, you just beat the fat guy in front of you. He just did it right there. Averill, good pass rusher. As a down lineman and as a linebacker, second leading tackler behind Dan Bick. And Notre Dame is forced to use a time and brought to you by Comcast. The difference in third down conversions, which is a point of emphasis for Coach Weiss. Five of eight today. Third down and 11 here. Win with protection. Has another conversion, and McKnight with a career-high 10 catches now. That one for 14. Just eating up the corners on the on the out routes, aren't they, Tom? Yeah, I think it's maybe the sixth. Just plain old vanilla out route. Really drilling the ball to his left today. Which has been a problem, as yep. we mentioned earlier. For, for whatever reason, didn't appear to be anything mechanically. No. Just some receiver's fault and yep. some. And today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. Irish just short of the Purdue 20. 31st first down just in the books. Tip, tip ball incomplete intended for McKnight. And Spencer got his, I think, both hands on that ball. Anthony Spencer, who you know, played so well a couple of years ago and has played again well today. He's right over here. There he is. Kind of moves around as a defensive end. Yep. Got his right hand on that one. So second down and 10, there's Spencer. As we said, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week after that performance against Minnesota with 10 tackles, nine of them solos, two sacks, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery he's against the have, Gophers. And he's gonna have a, give a lot of tackles in the Big Ten trouble this year. Quinn finds Carlson. Four of them hop on him, and it takes four to get into the turf. Soggy as it is, Bick was the first to get there. I remember talking to John Carlson a couple of weeks ago. History major, anthropology minor, he was telling us. Got, a, got turned on to American history by a high school history teacher. And uh, like a lot of his teammates, uh, has chosen a double major. Including Dave Brady Quinn, who will graduate in three and a half years with a double major in finance and poli-sci. Third down and seven. Quinn sacked by Spencer. They <laughs> Anthony Spencer. You you have to have a plan for Anthony Spencer, and even if you do, a lot of times it doesn't work. Alex McGee was there too. Loss of nine. 
uh, Anthony Spencer is just right up here, number 49. A quick jump off the ball. Ryan Harris has had a pretty good year as a pass blocker, just can't keep up with his speed. He got to the outside edge so quickly in the first couple of steps, Ryan Harris couldn't catch up. So Joya will attempt uh, a 47-yard field goal. Samarja the holder. From 47, the kick is no good. Wide left, the flag down just now, late flag. You know, the Irish are clapping as, it, it, as if it's against Purdue. Already they've kept uh, one drive alive with a running into the kicker penalty, which was questionable. This one a personal foul against the Boilermakers. Well, stupid penalty there. Joe Tiller saying uh, one of the objectives for his young team was to keep your poise in this environment, their first road game, their first real test of the season. And he wanted to see him play hard for 60 minutes. Play hard for 60 yeah. minutes. And he's saying he likes the intensity, likes the chemistry of the team. He says they really seem to care about each other. And, yeah. uh, it seems to be a genuine emotion. The kick was no good. After the play was over, personal foul, 49 of the defense. That will be assessed from the previous spot, half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, on Anthony Spencer, who's played so well. He just say, why don't you just give a touchdown? That's what Joe just said. Why don't you just give, why don't you just give a touchdown? <laughs> And then there will be a penalty against Purdue. Just some shoving and yeah. shoves the guy in the back. Uh, again, I don't think you need to call that one, Tom, but especially given the situation. Absolutely. He did. This guy blocked a field goal earlier in the year against Nathan Parsegan, a relative of Era. Who was presented uh, the game ball last night from the miracle comeback from last week against Michigan State. Curtis Painter, dangerous pass. And then a flag down on Farine. Orton was the intended receiver, and Farine just mistimed it a little yeah. bit. You're right, because Painter threw that off his back foot, didn't yep. have all the juice on it he wanted. I thought Farine was going to step in front. Good pass rush on on Painter. Couldn't quite step into it, could he? Didn't have all of it on, and then Farine makes the. Uh, I think that was pass interference. I think he got there yes. before the ball did. Uh, it looked like he had a hand in the small of the back too before he collided with him. Cheats. <laughs> Nothing doing. That's Abby Amiri again. And that'll be the final play of the third quarter. Big afternoon in the rain for the Fighting Irish today as they lead Purdue at the end goal that the, the Leprechauns are guarding. Been a good day for Leprechauns here at 35-14 as we start the fourth. Second and 16 for Purdue. Curtis Painter whips it downfield. Lyman has it. What a big day that young receiver is having as he continues to signal that He's going to be a force in the future. Farine tackles him after 39 yards. You know, he came into this game really as maybe their second threat after Dorian Bryan. He may leave this game as their top threat. And they keep throwing him the deep passes, the skinny posts, let him use his height and his body to protect the ball from the receiver. Another good play by Selman Lyman. And a good day by Painter, too, the young quarterback. Lyman with 205 yards receiving. Hand it to Sheets. Try to use a blocker, and he does. A blocker, it was Bryant. Got him an extra couple of yards. Farine tackles him after he picks up the first. Hey, Curtis Painter has played pretty doggone well. And, you know, he's thrown for almost 300 yards. He's thrown one touchdown, and he's had a bunch of balls dropped. And as we said, managed the game pretty well. The score clearly is tough to manage. But everything else has gotten his team in and out, protected the football, made good decisions. Maybe they have a guy they can build on here. Came into today leading the Big Ten in total offense. Last year was Big Ten all-freshman. Sheets, short of the 30. 
Yeah, with Corey Sheets, we were talking about his high school track career with him this week. And we ran the 100 meters, the 200 meters, the 4 by 100 shot put. Actually even tried the pole vault. Yeah, he said he tried it once, but when he found himself coming down backwards, he said, no more of that. Everything but the pole vault. <laughs> Never got even up to the crossbar, did he? He was uh, an all-state track performer. Good dual threat, too. Good runner, good receiver. From Manchester, Connecticut, Bloomfield High School, Connecticut Player of the Year. Painter's pass almost intercepted through the hands of Brockington. Brockington playing in the place of Travis Thomas. You mentioned at the top that we did own ups, uh, lineups, Tom. Joe Brockington, really the, the coach there, they were saying he's more of a rundown player, Charlie Weiss was saying to us yesterday, but good in the pass, uh, pass uh, defense here. Got right in that throwing lane, trying to get another inside slant to sell one lineup. Third down. Six defensive backs on for the Irish. That'll be offside, a free play. Incomplete. They cut Abby Amiri offside. You know, and Painter knew it, right, Tom? He yeah. knew it, so he went deep. I mean, again, hit smart heads up play by Curtis Painter. We have a flag. Offside, 95, defense, five yard penalty, remains third down. Curtis Painter, as we said, just managing this game so well down the bottom of the screen is number 95. Get the ball snapped. Robbie Powell, the center, does a smart thing, and then this is even smarter. Take a shot for the end zone. Curtis Painter hoping to be an architect some days, he told us this week. Trying to build a comeback right now, down 35 14. And believe it or not, Painter is an artist. As the leprechaun leads the cheers on the sideline. Well, full time, does love building things. That's a direct snap to Bryant. Dorian Bryant gets a block from Sheets, but nowhere to go. Hemmed in, now looking for a block from Painter. Nothing doing. And back to the 30-yard line where Lambert takes him to the turf. Yeah, Terrell Lambert just continues to make big play after big play on defense. Remember the fumble in the, you know what? Here's a quarterback faking that he's going to uh, get the ball, and Bryant is right back here. Takes a direct snap. Painter faking as if he were he changing the play, the making sure his linemen hear it, and they snap it directly to Bryant. A little trickery from... Bill Legg and Ed Zondrecker, the co-offensive coordinators. Legg calls the plays from upstairs. Now fourth and four. There's Lyman. He's been so tough. Painter through the hands of Sheets. Out of the backfield. And I don't think even if he had caught it, he would have yeah. made the first down. Would have been a tight throw, but Selwyn Lyman was there. And then Crum gives him a shot for good measure. Irish take over on downs. Purdue quarterback Curtis Painter has had a pretty good afternoon, but his team trailed, and they just gave up the ball on downs to the Irish at their own 30-yard line. Brady Quinn sends Anastasio in motion and then handing to Walker. Another good tackle by Terrell Vincent. Walker so with the uh, tackle with the help from Cliff Averill. Yeah, Brady Quinn has been pretty efficient all over the field. Left, right, and up to middle. I see 14 of 20. That's 70%, I believe, Tom, to his left. Center, 88% to his right. What's that, 83%? <laughs> So, I mean, he's been on target everywhere. Don't act like you just added that up in your head. I did. Jeez, no shoes and socks, huh? <laughs> and remember, we noted that uh, Brady Quinn had had trouble throwing to his left. It was a point of emphasis in practice all week long from Charlie Weiss, who took a personal hand in it. And obviously, it helped as the Irish take their second time out of the second half. 1141 shows on the Kin Financial Group, providing powerful retirement income security resources to help you say hello, future. The sun shining, believe it or not, at Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson. 
David Gibson, our producer, John Gonzalez, our director, Charlie Weiss, having a little laugh with the <laughs> official on the sideline. You can do that when you're up 35 14. Quinn empties the backfield with Walker in motion, so five wide receivers and Blitz nearly got to Quinn. He ducked under it and then is ridden down by Spencer at a 30 yard line. Poor tail. And don't forget, once today's game ends, you can visit NBCSports.com for the live Vonage Notre Dame post game report. Your place for all the info you need to know after the game. And it includes the press conferences for both coaches, Charlie Weiss, and in this case, Joe Tiller. Full game replays and uh, everything you need to know. That's all at NBCSports.com. It might have been a face, it was a face mask on Brady Quinn. Loss on the play, third down. Quinn caught by Samarja. Brady Quinn's loss is complete. Looks like he's just short of the first down marker. Samarja was brought down by David Kinker. Entrance uh, Jeff Price, a pretty good athlete. And, uh, Punter from, from Texas, originally actually signed with the University of Texas, changed his mind, came to uh, Irish land. They're pretty happy about that. I guess so. As we said earlier, Coach Weiss identified him as the only consistent player all season. Oh, get away from him. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, it was Royce Adams. I don't know why Adams was so close. Anyway, it's the second Notre Dame punt. And time for our Liberty Mutual Legends of the game. 1966, a golden year for the Irish under Era Parsegian. Quarterback Terry Hanratty led Notre Dame on the ground and through the air as the Irish outscored their opponents 362 to 38, including six shutouts on their way to a 9-0-1 record and the national championship. And that 1966 team, the subject of our Liberty Mutual Legends of the game, being honored at the stadium here. And here they are before the game today, honored on the 40th anniversary of their national championship. The only uh, blemish was that tie with Michigan State, the famous game of the century. You mentioned Terry Henry. 40 years ago, he threw 63 passes against Purdue. Back to Jim Seymour and Terry Hanready made the cover of Time Magazine. And let's go to Lewis. Well, I don't know if it looked like Lewis was trying to turn that mic on. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In any event, we'll get back to Lewis and Terry Hanready when we get the audio problems fixed. Meantime, Painter. Oh, boy. Broken up. Nice defensive play made by Mike Richardson. Yeah, Mike Richardson's really had a nice year for the Irish defensively. All right, let's try again. Lewis, Mike here we, this time. Here, here we go, Tom. Hey, Mr. Hanready, I've been watching you all game. Just steps away from the field where you earned that championship in 66. What's it like to come back and celebrate 40 years later? It's wonderful to come back because you have all your teammates. You something you haven't seen for 40 years. So it's fun to come back and socialize with them and to get a very close view of the game out here, too. Exactly. Well, We'll watch this play develop, and I may have another question for you in just a second. All right, so, all right Lewis. Okay, through to Jim Seam uh, Seymour 13 times in 1966 against Purdue for 276 yards. Wow. Painter down the sideline. Oh, nice adjustment. By Greg Orton. Yeah. Orton made the adjustment, made the catch. First down, Purdue. 21 yards. Let's go to Lewis. All right, Tom. Well, you and Pat were talking about what he and Mr. Seymour did years ago, but your defense was unbelievable, too, only allowing five touchdowns in that 66 season. So what kind of a reunion has it been for them to talk about the defensive success, too? Well, you always hear about the glory, boys, the quarterbacks, the running backs, right. and receivers. When you have a defense that pitches six shutouts and they give up an average of 3.2 points per game, right. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to play quarterback. And so what kind of celebration has been going on this weekend? What have you been doing to celebrate it? Well, we've done all stories because 
hours were a lot better now than we were then. <laughs> That's a great answer. The last thing I'll ask you is, uh, Eric Parsegan was here for 11 seasons. This was the first of his uh, two championships. What did you learn from him? Give me something that we just don't know about Parsegan. We learned how to be a man. How to really take control of what you do on the field and off the field. Eric was probably one of the biggest uh, male factors to a lot of individuals who played for him, me included. And he really taught you the game. And he taught you how, how to react off the field also. All right, well, congratulations again and enjoy the rest of this game. Thank you. Tom. All right, Lewis, here's Curtis Painter scrambling. Flag down as he slides to the 40. It would be a first down if it stands, but it's... Looks like it's going to be against Purdue. Well, we were talking about that 1966 National Championship team. Here they were at the pep rally last night. And Coach Charlie Weiss presenting Jim Lynch with the game ball from last week's win, the miracle comeback against Michigan State. Well, I remember sitting in the stands that year as a little kid in the Coliseum when they beat USC 51 to nothing, 1966. Cap off that year. Curtis Painter with uh, some wet grass stuck to his arm calls a play on first and 20 after the penalty against the Boilermakers holding penalty against Purdue. Painter with plenty of protection gives him time to go for Orton and broken up by Nduque. Well, what a nice conversation we had yesterday with Shenando and Nduque, number 18, the free safety for the Irish. You know, he and Brady Quinn have been best friends since seventh grade. He was a receiver for Brady Quinn in high school and made a nice defensive play on that one. Live together and compete in everything you can imagine. Yeah. Darts, pool, whatever it is. Well, Brady was actually thinking about taking home a cat this week as a pet, and uh, Shenindum said, no way. Put his foot down on that yeah, one, didn't no, he? No cats in our house. His uh, big brother was a Notre Dame student, now in the Navy. He's here today, and uh, his dad is the pass is complete to Taylor out of the backfield. Painter's and the Duqueway's uh, dad, used, Stephen, used to drive him to the campus to visit his older brother. These guys were a pretty good high school combination. Hoffman High School, Dublin, Ohio, the Shamrocks. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, he started as a wide receiver here. He was recruited even before Brady Quinn. And uh, in Duqueway caught. 48 passes from Brady, 10 touchdowns as a senior. And Nduque has a, a younger sister, Gracie, that's sitting in the student section here today, a student at Notre Dame. Painter, right in the center of the defense to Dustin Keller, the tight end, who lugs it to the 40 and a Purdue first down after 13. Prior to that catch, Keller only had 13 yards of reception. This is the guy that came in averaging 20 yards a catch on 18. Touchdown, you know, a bunch of big plays, and he has been throttled by the inside interior of the Irish defense. Purdue advances to the Notre Dame 39 with a first down. Play action fake, and Painter looking, looking, found the open man, Bryant. And he did a good job, didn't he, of finding the open receiver, looked one way, looked in the center, and then found Bryant. Well, you can only do that if you get pretty good pass protection. Jordan Grimes up front, Robbie McDowell, Sester, Otto, Winari, had plenty of time, looked right, left. And once again, though, a good tackle by Mike Richardson. Otherwise, yeah. you know, he's going to pick up another 10 yards minimum. It is a Purdue first down. Painter lost it for oh. Keller. Helmet taken off on the hit by Nduque. It's an incomplete. An incomplete pass. And Ray Herring also hitting him along with Nduque. Keller lost his helmet and the football. I don't think he even actually realized his helmet was off. Started walking to the huddle. Yeah, there's the hit. Actually, Maurice is that, Crum. Is that a helmet to helmet, though, by yeah. on Ray Herring on Dustin Keller? I think he, real, he didn't realize he lost the helmet, is it? I think that's a helmet-to-helmet -helmet play on Ray Herring. Should have been a penalty. Second down. That's a flag. 
as they go for Lyman, who's been the big play man, and it's on Farine of catchable. Notre Dame. It certainly has to be catchable, right? Unless it's holding. Number 15 in the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. So the pass interference call on the junior from New Jersey. You know what is catchable or not catchable these days by these great athletes, right? But, yeah, <laughs> this one's not even in bounds. Well, yeah, and he was. His, his, pro yeah, his progress was impeded, so he had no chance to catch. It's hard to say whether it was catchable or not. 220 receiving yards. Obviously, a career high for the young lineman, and the most by a Notre Dame opponent this season. For the score. How about Curtis Painter there, Tom? I mean, he's got people at his feet. He just hung in there, waited, waited, waited before he's getting sacked and just drilled it to sell one line. There's nothing harder for a quarterback than have people at your feet and still delivering a strike like that. Perfect, perfect play by Curtis Painter. On his way down, got enough zip on it to find his, to get into a 6 4 receiver. Once again, running one of those skinny posts for the touch. I tell you, the Boilermaker fans uh, have reason to be excited yeah. about these uh, offense in the future because Painter and Selwyn Lyman, Dorian Bryant is just a junior, Sheets is a junior, and Lyman with seven receptions, 33 yards per catch today for Selwyn. Selwyn Lyman, who was rated the number five wide receiver in all of high school football a couple of years ago, from Fort Wayne, just became the all-time leading receiver in yardage against Notre Dame. 229 yards receiving, the most ever by a Notre Dame opponent. And most importantly, two of those seven catches have been touchdowns. You know, it's just a two-possession game now. And Notre Dame expecting an onside kick from Summers. That's George West, the only deep man. And he's a good 40 yards behind everybody else. Blue line, line indicates the 10 yards. They kick it away. And West lets it bound out of the end zone for the touchback. Hey, Tom, let's take another look at this uh, touchdown. And kind of an interesting formation. Lyman kind of in an eye formation right here. And then runs this little skinny post. Gets his body in position again. And then the, the real Curtis Painter with people all over him drills it perfectly. You know, they get a little margin, a little larger margin for error when you have a guy this big and this tall. And just got great body position and the perfect throw for the touch. So 35-21, and now the Purdue defense called on to make a stop. Just under seven minutes to play. I think that short hopped him, did, yep. did it not? Yes, yes it did. Intended for Anastasio, incomplete. Intended for Chase Anastasio. Second down. Brady Quinn has protected the football pretty well today, but here's a situation now where Purdue really needs some sort of defensive play, a turnover, a tip ball maybe. Anthony Spencer's had a brilliant game this game, and he's down here. And you saw the numbers on Quinn, 290 yard passing performance today. Darius Walker trying to get a block from McKnight. Oh, okay. And Vincent just fought him off to make the tackle. Yeah, just like Mike Richardson for Notre Dame's had a good season tackling. Terrell Vincent today has a good has a good day tackling for a corner. Think about these corners. You have to cover those big old 6-5 receivers in Notre Dame, and then you have to come up and make tackles on Darius Walker. And Terrell Vincent did a nice job of it. 30 carries, 143 yards for Darius Walker today. Big, big third down for the Boilermakers. They welcome the return of the running game, the Irish. Notre Dame has converted 6 of 11. It's third down and nine. Brady Quinn given protection and finds Samarja. 
and he has the first down. Jeff Samarja has the Irish convert another third down, 11 yards. You know, you just can't, you cannot double team everybody, obviously, right? And if you give Brady Quinn the, the chance to throw it, the good, good protection, what you do, Samarja's right up here. He's going to run a little crossing route. But you got Carlson, the tight end, who's open. You got Samarja's open. You know, they, you know, they chose to play past events, not come with a blitz, gave him plenty of time, plenty of protection, and uh, that's usually fatal for a defense. Notre Dame now has converted 7 of 12, third down, 58%. And a first down pass from Quinn, who's chased and sacked. Again, it's Spencer, Anthony Spencer. Anthony Spencer is just unreal. I mean, if there's a better defensive end in the Big Ten, I'd like to see him. Brady wouldn't. No, you're right. Brady's seen enough of him today. Number 49, a little inside move. You know, he's beaten the, the tackle outside a couple times. This time inside. Got some help, I think, from Cliff April as well. And uh, yeah, April and a strong safety. Justin blitz. Stop. Yeah. Justin Scott also. Justin Scott, Spencer, April. So the fourth sack by the Boilermaker defense sets up a third down and 17, or excuse me, second down and 17. Or is it? Yeah, second down. Walker, short of the 30. All right. If, again, really just a two uh, possession game. Now it sets up the third and long. And in comes Sam Young. Isn't it interesting? The freshman right tackle comes in on third and long for pass protection, Brady Quinn. And timeout taken by Purdue as Brock Spack, the defensive coordinator, gathers his defenders on the sideline with a key third and long coming up for Notre Dame. Purdue needs a stop desperately. 35-21. Four thirty-eight on the clock. The scoreboard says Notre Dame 35, Purdue 21. And the Irish with a third and long. From just short of their own 30-yard line. From the shotgun, Quinn sets up a screen to Walker. Got a good block. And sprints downfield close to the first down. Santucci laid his man to the ground. A gain of 16. Averill and Irwin force him out of bounds, but it will be a first down for the Irish as they convert a huge third down there. Isn't it amazing? They haven't been terribly effective in the screens all year long as they were a year ago, but today the screen game has been there all day. Good block by John Sullivan again downfield to clear the way for Darius Walker. Before the play was over, he was he knew it was gonna well they're gonna measure now. Thought couldn't really see where they spotted the football exactly right in front of that Notre Dame bench. So it was close and so close they will measure. It is a first down. Always trust your first sentiment. Okay. Huh? All right. Well, meanwhile, Darius Walker has against the Purdue defense accounted for over well over 200 yards in total offense our first down line presented today by Xerox Darius Walker with 146 yards rushing and 72 receiving 218 yards from scrimmage they add on the, how about Brady Quinn too 316 yards passing throwing two touchdowns first hundred uh, yard rushing performance by Darius this season who is spelled by Maneer Prince now the freshman is the tailback Pitch to Prince. Nice move to get uh, a short game. Josh Ferguson on the hit for the Boilermakers. He avoided uh, Prince did a, the first couple of men, but not much room to roam. It'll be second down and about seven. Oh, it seems like a funny time for C. Manier Prince just when you're trying to really run the clock out. Uh, the guy who hasn't touched upon on that guy has been so, it's protected the football for so well this year, actually his whole career. Thought we were going to see Prince a little bit earlier in this game. Charlie saying yesterday he'd like to have to touch it 10 to 12 times. Well, that's one. With 3.50 left. There's two. Tried to cut back and stopped in his tracks by Dan Bick. What he was saying about the Prince earlier, he said, I, I just don't see many guys with his kind of speed. He says, just wow, kind of speed. 
And Darius Walker comes back in, Prince to the sideline. Third down and four, clock continues to roll, approaching the three minute mark. Short of the first down, it'll be fourth down. How about using a timeout, maybe? Purdue has two of remaining. And they do take a timeout. Yeah, that's a good use of a timeout. Clock stopped at 2.57. And Charlie hasn't absolutely decided yet to punt by the looks on his face. Well, you opened uh, the telecast by saying that the Notre Dame offense had been the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, today, it, it's all good. Yeah, you know, Quinn's been sensational, really been accurate, thrown the two touchdowns. Darius Walker's been the, the star of the game, 146 yards rushing. And now about 14 points in this first quarter. And then 8-4 and four on, uh, eight for 14 on third down. Those are two areas where they just did not, had not done well this year at all. So, you know, it's no longer the good, bad, and the ugly. The spaghetti <laughs> westerns complete. And Clint Eastwood has gone home. They'd only uh, scored 10 points in the first quarter prior to the 14-point outburst today. And the punt team is headed to the field with Brady Quinn there on the sideline, helmet off. So fourth and three, and Charlie Weiss will punt to Royce Adams. It'll be Jeff Price in punt formation. And there's Adams. Trying to pooch punt it and does a good job. And they down it around the five yard line, five or six yard line. Coach Weiss saying that Jeff Price is starting to master the nuances of punting, and there's a good example. Well, Curtis Painter's been bothered by the Notre Dame defense all day. That's our Comcast defensive play of the game. Well, he's been hit, he's been knocked down, he's been pressured. But in spite of it all, I think he's played remarkably well. Our Comcast defensive play of the game, the hits on quarterback Curtis Painter. Well, he's, this is only his 10th career start. And you know, your teammates need to learn something about you every game and every new situation. This is one for Curtis Painter. On the road for the first time this year. Bryant couldn't hold on. Another drop, although that was a tough chance as uh, Painter heaved it from his own end zone. He's, at, he's completed 359 yards of passes. It would have been over 400 if the guy's been able to hang on to some balls. You're right, this was a tough catch. Well, maybe it wasn't yeah, that tough. It didn't yeah. look so tough on that free play. And the guy who caught so many passes, 14 of them last year against Notre Dame, has pretty much been shut out. Three catches today. Painter got the ball delivered just as Orton made his break, and he holds on for the catch in the first down. Just, that play is just so hard to defend if you throw it on time. A simple little square out, even though Terrell Lambert had pretty good coverage, you just can't stop it when you throw it on time, and that's just what Painter did. It went for 13, the ball at the 20. Zivikowski really kind of playing a linebacker position right now. The nickel set. Oh. Under pressure, Painter's pass almost intercepted. Well, Derek Landry right in the face of Curse Painter. Lambert nearly had his third. Derek Landry, number 66, who's really played well the last few weeks. He had a big fourth quarter sack last week against Drew Stanton in Michigan State. And uh, that should have been, or could have been, easily an interception by Lambert. Second down. Pater chased, unloads, and incomplete intended for Lyman. Lambert was running with him. It's going to be third down. Playing 
13 games in a row this season, winding up in Hawaii. And they'll travel to Iowa City next week for a big game. Hawkeyes hosting the number one team in the land, Ohio State, tonight. Painter to Sheets. Corey Sheets made the first man Zibikowski miss. Crosses the 25 short of the first down where Ray Herring stops him. The only one time now. They, they should be uh, getting this ball snapped a lot quicker, don't you think, Tom? Yeah, right. In a minute, 50, the clock is going. I know it's a fourth down play. Still have one timeout remain. They need to score in an onside kick and score again. Fourth down and three. Flag down as it went through the hands of Lyman. The pass was high, and Lambert's going to be called. Well, we've talked about the ups and downs of a quarterback, right? Number 20, defense. Ball is a spot ball, first down. Terrell Lambert beaten twice in the Michigan game, two interceptions last week, had a, night, a very nice game so far today. He said uh, well, a defensive back has to have. Very good concentration by the coach. Penalty gives Purdue a first down, but the clock shows 133. Boilers need a big play. Throwing underneath and complete to Keller. You're absolutely right. They, they need, this is where they need a guy like Dorian Bryan, who's so good after the catch, you know, to catch one of those crossing routes where you run in full speed, maybe, you know, at 10, 12 yards, and then run away from the defense. Because I don't think at this point, down two scores, kind of keep getting to that six or seven yard chunks. Well, if Joe Tiller said he wanted his players to uh, put, compete yeah, for 60 minutes, he's gotten yeah, that. Absolutely. Second down. Painter stands in the pocket and then throws it away. And let's take a look at our uh, Chevrolet players of the game. Darius Walker, of course, with a huge day, and Lyman with the most receiving yards ever by a Notre Dame opponent. Two stars today are our Chevrolet players of the game. In recognition of their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund, Chevy, and American Revolution. Their quarterback sneak by Curtis Painter for the first down. Keeps the drive alive, but again, they need to get it in some chunks now, Tom, right? Right. And the, our players of the game, Raymond McKnight, all he did have was a career-high 10 receptions for 120 yards and two touchdowns, and we didn't, didn't even mention it. him for yeah. player of the game. Here's Painter to Lyman, who makes another catch. See if forward progress gives him the first down. Lambert tackled him right at the first down marker, just short. And at the one-minute mark, Notre Dame keep it, still keeping everything in front of them. Ray Herring and... Shenindum and Dukeway deep in coverage, as you can see. Maybe a Mary got through and forced Painter to throw it away over the head of Lyman. Stops the clock with 46 seconds. This is the, you know, this year, this is kind of the area where Dustin Keller, that their big tight end, has been so athletic and so good, number 28. So he's caught three passes over 50 yards this this uh, year so far. And the, uh, you know, for a tight end, he's a deep threat, but they just well, haven't gotten the matchups they wanted today. Absolutely. Yeah, we mentioned him, high jumps, 6'10 in high school, great athlete down the field. Sheets out of the backfield, incomplete. Took a shot from Zibikowski after the ball went over his head. Stops the clock at 42 seconds and makes fourth down. Fourth down and a yard for Purdue. Sheets goes to the sideline. from the shotgun on fourth and one. His pass incomplete through the hands of Lyman on that slant that's been successful for them. 
And Purdue's last gasp goes awry. Notre Dame takes over on downs with 37 seconds remaining. On a day when Brady Quinn and the Irish offense outdueled Curtis Painter and their Purdue counterparts, but good performances by both offensive teams today. Yeah, the Irish absolutely in sync. They've been out of sync the last couple of games offensively. But it really started with that opening drive. For the first time this year, they marched down and got a touchdown on the board. <laughs> Favorite play if you're a Notre Dame fan is the quarterback taking the knee. Wynn does. Purdue has a timeout left, but they won't use it. 